Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk about snake bites. Um, I had a snake bite patient uh, come in last week. It wasn't my direct patient, um, but I was working with one of the residents that had them and um, he was kind of keeping me updated on it because it's not every day you see a snake bite in the ED. <clears throat> and he was telling me, oh, they came from an urgent care and all they really did at the urgent care was give them some antibiotics and then told them to come to the emergency department. And I was like very confused um, because the snake bite just happened. So it's like not infected yet. Um, and the most important thing you need to do with a snake bite is give them, um, get them to withdraw around the area of erythema and edema from the localized swelling. And they didn't do that either. So I was just very confused. And I was like, well, you know what? Now would be a good time to make a video on everything um, that you need to do for a snake bite. So let's get started. So just to give you an overview, uh, there are two main types of snakes. There are the crotalins and then there are the elapids. And um, so most people are just kind of like, oh, what does that mean really? So crotalins are going to be the majority of your snakes that you see in North America. So these are gonna be your rattlesnakes, your water moccasins, um, your copperheads. And then your elapids are gonna be your coral snakes. And I'm sure you guys have heard about the coral snakes. Those are those snakes that are red, yellow, and black. Um, and I'm gonna give you guys a good picture of that in a second. So the majority of snakes, if they are venomous, are gonna be your crotalins. So, but let's take a look at that coral snake picture. The eastern coral snake is natively distributed in the United States from North Carolina south to Florida and then along the Gulf Coast to Texas. It has yellow bands next to the black bands as shown, which is different from other U.S. snakes that are not venomous, like the corn snake or the king snake, which may have red bands next to the black bands. Like they say, red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, friend of Jack. And then this is a great picture of the rattlesnake you might see in the United States. So this would be a part of the crotalin uh, snake family. So like I mentioned before, um, not all snakes are venomous and not all venomous snakes actually release venom with every bite. And this can be called a dry bite. So the snake could bite you, not release any venom, and that is a dry bite. And this happens about 25% of the time. Um, and to kind of tell if the snake bite actually has venom in it, oozing at the fang mark sites is a pretty good indicator. Um, you may also see a lot of um, erythema, edema, ecchymosis at the localized site. Um, and this is more common with the crotalins, so with the majority of the snakes, so this is your water moccasins, rattlesnakes, copperheads, you'll see more localized tissue, swelling, um, and again, you're going to want to mark this site, so draw on the patient with a marker and mark it, and um, make sure you just draw on the, on the outside so you can really monitor that swelling and edema. And then with coral snakes, you're gonna have more neurotoxicity. So you're gonna have paresthesias, um, cranial nerve palsies, altered mental status, and then the big thing to watch out for is any type of respiratory depression. Um, other vague symptoms could be nausea and vomiting coming from the patient. So those are your symptoms. In terms of the workup for snake bites, you're gonna wanna grab a lot of labs. So you're gonna wanna get a CBC um, uh, because a lot of snake bites can cause thrombocytopenia. So if you want to really monitor a patient and their status, getting a CBC to monitor that thrombocytopenia is important. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna grab coag, so PTINR, APTT, and fibrinogen, um, especially with crotalin snake bites and envenomation, you will see um, elevated PTINR and APTT and decrease in fibrinogen. Um, always grab a CK on these patients because one of the main side effects with any snake bite is compartment syndrome. Um, and then I would just grab a lot of other basic labs, making sure all their electrolytes look good. So when it comes to the treatment of all snake bites, again, you're going to want to mark that site of erythema and edema um, so you can further monitor it later on. Um, take off all jewelry, so if they've been bitten on the hand, take off rings, if they've been bitten on the foot and they have an ankle bracelet for any reason, take it off, it's gonna swell. Um, make sure you irrigate the area um, as you would with any wound, you wanna irrigate it and then um, 
make sure you put them in a neutral position and immobilize that joint or area. And then other than that, it's a lot of supportive gear. IV fluids, if they're a little blood pressure soft. Um, blood products are usually rarely um, needed in snake bites. And then you're gonna wanna think about antivenom. And there's two types of antivenom. So one for the crotalin species, and that's called crofab. And then there's another antivenom for all the coral snake bites. So there's certain indications for crofab um, antivenom, and that is if there is any increased erythema, edema, or necrosis in the skin that's really not turning around with supportive measures, so that's why you wanna mark the site as soon as you see this patient. And then the next one would be compartment syndrome or any coag or thrombocytopenia you see on labs. So all those are indications for giving crofab. And then when it comes to coral snake bites, you're gonna wanna give the antivenom every single time. And the main side effect of antivenom is um, anaphylaxis. A lot of antivenom comes from horses and equine based. So um, one of the main side effects is anaphylaxis. So make sure you monitor that. Um, some doctors even give Epi and Benadryl with antivenom just to kind of um, really anticipate that and or blunt the anaphylaxis that might occur with giving antivenom. So when it comes to disposition, like I said before, um, not all snakes are venomous, actually most of them aren't, and not all venomous snakes actually release venom with every bite. 25% of venomous snake bites are dry bites, so keep that in mind. Monitor these patients, get all of those labs, um, monitor them for six hours, make sure all their labs look beautiful, make sure that if erythema and edema aren't spreading, um, and if you have any indication to give antivenom, you're going to want to admit these patients. But if you find that um, the patient's very stable, the erythema and edema aren't um, increasing, all their labs came back beautifully, they don't have any signs of a compartment syndrome, and they weren't bitten by a coral snake bite, because if they are, then they're going to get antivenom and be admitted. Um, then they can go home. So it's just all about that monitoring in the first six hours. And that's it guys, thanks for listening. I hope this was a quick review of snake bites and I hope you enjoyed it. It's always fun to do a little bit of wilderness medicine and my emergency medicine, um, even though I live in a city. So I hope you enjoyed, um, I'll see you next Wednesday.